Susan Stewart, <laughs> you won again and you did it with this magnificent lace quilt. Now I know you won the Home Sewing Machine Workmanship Award, mm -hmm. but I, like everybody else, want to know how you did all of this beautiful lace work. So can you just walk us through that? I can, and I even have samples to show you. Uh, the lace is all digitized machine embroidery. I didn't do the digitizing. These are designs from Zunt Designs, like all the other embroidery on the quilt. They do particularly good digitizing of lace designs. You can't stitch just a regular embroidery design on a water-soluble stabilizer. And it would look pretty until you wash it out and it would just turn into a wad of thread. You have to have a lot of underlaying supporting stitches for a lace design, it's a special digitizing. Um, anyway, I've used two layers of a water-soluble stabilizer. You can see two layers there. And I like to use this kind of water-soluble stabilizer that looks kind of like a handy wipe or an interfacing. There's another type of water-soluble stabilizer that looks more like plastic, but with the repeated needle piercings that are required for this dense stitching, it can, the, the plasticky kind of stabilizer will just perforate and it'll tear apart, just like perforated paper. Uh, so I stitch it on my, on my stabilizer, and you can see that I've trimmed this edge very closely here, and that's so that you can see how this, they're made to fit together, and there's a little line of stitching here. This embroidery fits right over top of that, and then it can be joined together with either a monofilament or the same thread in a zigzag stitch. And that holds the layers together. And I do all that before I, before I soak the stabilizer away so that I have the entire piece, loop, of lace uh, with the stabilizer still attached. Okay, so now when you're doing this, are you doing it in a length? Well, the embroidery is done in individual pieces. Well, with a larger hoop, I can combine a couple, two or maybe three together, depending on the size of my hoop. But um, no more than no more than that. I still have to join segments and then you have together. To and then you right. have to move your hoop. right, right. Because when you're doing embroidery in a hoop, you can't just continue to stitch the way you could stitch a seam for a mile. Um, you can't be or, like a border or crocheting. Strip. <laughs> right. No. Right. So um, it's done in segments and then they're joined together. And then after it's all joined together, then I soak it in um, warm water to remove the stabilizer. And this is what I get. I like to have all of my stabilizer soaked away so it may take several water changes. Uh, but, you know, it just sits and you in do the water overnight. And you do warm water? It, it goes a little bit faster with warm water. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I've spent a long time on this. It doesn't matter if it takes an hour or overnight or two days in the washing machine tub to get rid of the to get rid of the stabilizer. Okay, so you would have made this piece of right. lace as well, right. wouldn't you? Right. All right. So now you have to insert it. Yes, I do because my quilt I'll is one you. whole piece. Okay, there we go. Um, I'll let you hold this one too. Okay, scary part. I have a fully quilted quilt, and I have these pieces of lace, and I'm going to cut a hole in my quilt. Okay, so I lay the lace on here and mark where I want my lace to be. And then I cut the quilt out. You can see right here, the section that I have quilted, that I have cut out. So you can see, and that, that, is, that is kind of scary. Mm -hmm. And um, I did make a big mistake on this quilt. It took a long time to repair and it sat in a trash bag for about six months until I finally figured out and got up the motivation to do it. How do I go in it. and fix it? Yeah, yes. how to fix it. Anyway, you cut out you cut out this section and then um, you have to finish the edges. I don't want just that raw edge on the inside of my quilt, on the back side of my quilt. I want the back to be as pretty as the front. Mm -hmm. So I go through a pretty, a pretty detailed process of, of um, binding the quilt and attaching the lace. So um, I have a really pretty binding on the back that has a, a metallic stitching around it, which is all hand applique in place. I do a partial binding on the front, stitch my lace on with monofilament, and then I hand applique the, the, the strip on the back to cover the um, stitching that attaches the lace. I didn't my want goodness. that showing so that, in the binding. So that's just a job all in its Oh, own, it's a long it? job, right, because both sides of that, bind, of that bias have to be stitched by hand. This is the back after I have finished it. Now on the, on the right, 
first I cut that piece out, remember, and then I did a sort of a partial binding with the silk on the right side, stitched my lace on, and then on the back side, I wanted to hide the edge of that partial binding and the stitching uh, attaching the lace because it's not real pretty and I didn't want my stitching to show. So I made a bias strip of fabric, of my backing fabric, and stitched this decorative machine stitching on it. This is just a decorative stitch from a, from a regular sewing machine. And then this is hand applique on, on both sides, right up to the fold of the, of, you know, the inside there, and then on the outside, and that hides the raw edge and the stitching and it makes the back real pretty. Do the center one first and then move to the bigger one? Um, I don't know if I did the center one or some of these smaller, um, these smaller circles. So you can see that, whoops, get the right side there. Some of the smaller circles were, were cut out as well. But yeah, I did, I did the center and these before I did the, 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 the larger big, the section. The big one. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, and so then how do you attach the, the lace on the edge of your quilt? The same way as I do these, although it's not quite as scary, I, I lay the lace out and make sure it's straight and where I want it. And this is definitely one where you need to not just measure twice, cut once, but measure about six times and then cut. But I measure where that inside, where the edge of the lace will be. I mark it, I cut, and then I did that same kind of finishing where I did a, a partial binding with this silk fabric, then stitched my lace on, then did the applique binding on the wrong side. So I would guess that the hardest part of this whole thing is taking those scissors and making that first cut. <laughs> the hardest part is fixing it when you don't do it right the first time. Oh gosh. But, um, <laughs> and actually the reason there are applique bows and streamers on here is to cover up where I, I made the, the mistake. Oh, okay, so now the award is for your quilting. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about that because you've done some straight line quilting, mm -hmm. you've done some curvy quilting. Right, right. Um, I like my quilting to be, you know, some, there needs to be a, a, a contrast of curvy and straight within any quilt for visual interest. And um, I like, you know, to try to switch up the backgrounds. If you have the same kind of background quilting throughout the whole quilt, it can get kind of boring if everything is just stippled or just cross-hatched or, you know, it's all the same. So I used a variety of, um, of background fills, all of them dense, pretty dense, so that my flowers and embroidery would pop up. So, um, yeah, here I've got a stipple that I did a little viney thing in, again, to, to give it some interest. Then you did pumpkin seeds. Right, I did pumpkin seeds, mm -hmm. and I did, um, I did some echo quilting, you know, just, just continuous echo quilting, and, um, and then I did the, 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 straight, the lines. straight lines. And that right. really does make these pop, the yeah, difference it does. in the quilting. Right, right. Because you have to have, if you have curvy quilting, you have to have, if you're going to put curvy quilting next to it, there has to be either a big difference in scale to be able to see the, the, the difference or a difference, you know, straight curvy contrast. Well, Susan, congratulations. This quilt is a stunner and well deserving of the Home Workmanship Award. So congratulations again. Thank you so much. I'm and we hope thrilled. that you'll enter our show mm -hmm. because we know all of you have quilts out there that you could enter in the AQS Quilt Week contest. And you know what? You can't win if you don't enter. Isn't it's that true. right? It's true. You never know. There's a first time. There's always a first time.